policy, California is the first state to have taxpayer-funded sex change surgeries for prisoners. The cost of each surgery and related care could run anywhere from $50,000 to $100,000. Is this an appropriate use of taxpayer money? Here to debate, columnist and psychology expert, Dr. Gina Loudon, and psychotherapist, Mel Daly. Thank you both for coming in. Thank you. Uh, so, the first question, most obvious, why is it, Mel, that uh, prisoners should be allowed to have this surgery on the taxpayer's dime? Well, what's happened is that prisoners file petitions with the federal government asking them to pay for these surgeries because they deem them medical, medically necessary, and the medical community agreed. Under the U.S. Constitution and the Eighth Amendment, when we imprison people, we can't do so under cruel and unusual punishment. So it's considered cruel and unusual punishment if these prisoners are held for long periods of time without being access to, without having access to this surgery. Uh, doctor, do you agree that it's cruel and unusual punishment if the government does not pay for a prisoner's sex change when they ask for one? It, absolutely not. And the science is on my side of this. I'm not sure why the other side is deciding to be science deniers now, but Johns Hopkins University ended their program because they realized that people who go through with a sex change surgery have a 20-fold increase in suicide rates as opposed to those who don't. And so this is not only very expensive to an already bankrupt system that is releasing tens of thousands of prisoners every year because of expenses, and now they're going to put all this money into what is essentially a plastic surgery that is very dangerous and playing with lives. And uh, the most the most important part about uh, the, the building block for all of this is a doctor needs to say that the operation is medically necessary for someone with gender dysphoria. They will, they will be harmed if they don't have it. Mm -hmm. How settled, though, Nell, mm -hmm. is the science behind that? How, how settled is the science? Uh, how accurately can every doctor uh, treat every patient or rather evaluate every patient and say this person has a medical necessity for a taxpayer-funded sex change. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know about the Johns Hopkins study, and I think your question's a great one. I think we're tr still trying to understand, as a society, what to do in these cases. In prisons, if you identify as a woman, but you're housed in a male prison system, you're 13 times more likely to be raped than someone from the general population in prison. So again, it's a very complicated question because what do we do with people who dress, who identify as a woman, but are housed in a male system and vice versa? And quickly, Dr. Loudon, what do you do with people like that? Uh, well, you give them a lot of therapy, and the fact of the matter is that even if they have the sexual reassignment surgery, their chances of greater depression and suicide are so much higher, their chances of recidivism are so much higher, that they're going to need additional psycho psychological help anyway. So why not just give that to them instead and not risk their lives with an experimental program that, as, as Nell said, uh, we, is really very experimental at this point. We don't fully understand it. All right, Dr. Gina Loudon and Nell Daly, thank you very much for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, a big